Gentlemen, consider taking your date to the movies and treat her like the queen she is by watching Spencer. The new movie about Princess Diana's decision to leave Prince Charles is in theaters and WFMY News 2's photojournalist Manning Franks rates the movie on screen. I had the pleasure of seeing Spencer at the closing gala of Film Fest 919 in Chapel Hill with my girlfriend. And unabashedly, this was one of my most anticipated films of the year. That gorgeously haunting trailer, that beautiful striking poster, and the rich subject matter of Princess Diana was just ready for an adaptation. So it pains me to say that it really wasn't my cup of tea. You have to be able to do things you hate. You hate? There has to be two of you. It's the real one <laughs> and the one they take pictures of. For the good of the country. It's the country. Set during the Christmas holiday season of 1991, Princess Diana is trapped with the royal family at Sandringham House. During these three days, Diana is plagued with anxiety as the claustrophobia and constriction of the royal house begins to drown her. Diana must come to terms with the past, present, and the future before she loses her grip on her own reality. As the movie progresses, it becomes quite clear that the movie is keener on personifying the anxiety of Diana than it is telling a cohesive narrative with lush characters. Director Pablo Lorraine has a very distinct vision, and I commend him for his masterful use of visual elements, from cinematography to production design, to exemplify Diana Spencer's deteriorating state of being. However, that same distinct vision gets lost in its juggling of symbolism, becoming a muddied fable too focused on her trapped mental anguish that it forgets to give vibrancy and depth to Diana, as well as the rest of the cast. It drowns itself in cold allegory, leaving the viewer at arm's length, never truly letting them in to care about what's transpiring on the screen. Despite all that criticism, Spencer holds one of the best performances of the year in Kristen Stewart's portrayal of Princess Diana. Long gone are her early twilight days, and Spencer is the mainstream cementing of her as a truly inventive actress. Stewart's Diana is a vulnerable performance that begs you to not look away, for fear she would disappear altogether from existence. Truly a transformative, career-defining role. At the end of the day, the fable of Spencer is one that I can respect in theory, but can't really get on board with in terms of execution. So while I would encourage you to try it out, as it may be for you, I will have to give it a for you to decide. You can find Spencer playing exclusively at your local theater. I didn't even recognize that that was Kristen Stewart uh, yeah. until halfway through. You're like, from Twilight. I've just never seen her with the blonde hair. I mean, she's That's a dead yeah. ringer for her. She looks just she like does. her. I remember when the pictures first came out of her like playing this role. I mean, it's crazy how closely she looks she like does. her. She does. Um, even though I know Manning, what he said, you know, he didn't think it was the best. I still do want to see it. I want to see it too. I actually like saw to the it. commercial for the first time just a week or so ago, and I was like, that's something I would go to the theater to yeah. see. She was such a big deal because she was, back then, she was looked at as kind of the, the every man's mm -hmm. princess, you know. And I remember my next door neighbor, a girl three or four years younger than me, and I remember seeing her get up in the middle of the night because they were, she was so excited, loved the Princess Diana, and would run downstairs and watch it. I could see mm -hmm. it. Our houses were really yeah. close. And so a lot of people got up and watched that in the middle of the night. Yeah. It was really cool when she got married. Well, I'm going to go see it. Yes. I All am right. too. We'll we go together. Back.